The shortages we're all experiencing right now might have a more dangerous side than just not being able to acquire the things we need. Understand that shortages have been the root cause of many conflicts throughout history, and now there are some new shortages showing up that might create conflict here in the future. So stick around for the rest of the video. We're going to talk about why that's a possibility and why you need to prepare for it now. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're talking about how the shortages we're all experiencing right now could definitely lead to conflict here in the future. It's something we need to watch out for, and we need to understand that unlike shortages in the past of food, water, energy, or anything like that, these shortages are different and move us into a different landscape of 2021 or the future, you might say. And this is something that's occurring right now that we need to pay attention to, okay? And if you're worried about all the shortages that are going on possibly leading to conflict here in the future, then hit the subscribe button below because we need to talk about it and stay ahead of the game to make sure that we're better prepared for when these things actually occur. Okay, so understand right now one of the biggest shortages going on around the world is the semiconductor shortage or the microchip shortage. We talked about it on this channel months ago, but now it's gotten to the point where it's starting to finally find its way into the market. You can see that cars are not being produced, computers are harder to get a hold of, phones are harder to get a hold of, a lot of things are being affected by this shortage. To be honest with you, I bought a computer a year ago for about $1,300 that is now $1,800 for the same exact specs of that computer which doesn't make sense because things like computers are not supposed to appreciate in value, but that's how bad this shortage has become. Now, why can this possibly lead to conflict? Well, understand that semiconductors and microchips are used in every aspect of our lives currently in modern society, especially when it comes to things like the military. And countries like China are trying to constantly progress their military into the next phase. And without semiconductors and without microchips, they may not be able to do so. So in order for them to be more self-sufficient as a country and to be able to produce everything on their own, it might be the easiest route for them to go ahead and claim what they think is rightfully theirs. And what that is, is TSMC, which is the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Understand that China thinks Taiwan is still their region, it's their piece of land, but Taiwan operates as being its own self-reliant, dedicated country. So when the semiconductor shortage eventually pours over the edge and creates issues in the sense of being able to even produce military weaponry and technology of sorts, there is a good chance that countries like China might decide to take Com uh, companies like TSMC by force and actually take over Taiwan in order to acquire one of the world's largest independent dedicated semiconductor foundries and make sure that they have access to everything they need in the future to move their military ahead and stay ahead of the game especially when it comes to the world stage understand that a move like that would be highly strategic and volatile at the same time and that a country like the united states would not accept an invasion of taiwan very lightly however the united states has the same vested interest in taiwan as china in the sense that tsmc makes all the microchips for everything we have as well. And we want our military to keep progressing and gain in technology the same as China. So basically you're talking about a very strategic, very important resource that is in one area that's already very volatile. China's military has been provoking Taiwan for months, even years at this point. And the United States has definitely had their issues in the South China Sea as well as in the Taiwan Strait. So keep this in mind because this could easily lead to conflict. Shortages are always the root of some kind of a conflict, okay? Whether or not it's an economic issue, whether or not it's starvation, whether or not it's the fact that people don't have water, this is a different situation. This is superpowers talking about the one item they need in order to maintain superpower status, which is semiconductor microchips. Now. Moving on past that, because TSMC is definitely a strategic resource and a strategic value in the sense of what either country might be able to do if they were able to maintain their ability to acquire those microchips. What else is going on in the world right now that is seeing shortages that could eventually lead to other types of conflict or shows us a window into the future of possible issues and different scenarios that could occur? Keep in mind that right now there's a shortage of drugs, okay? Well, the drugs that we're talking about right here are the type that you jab into your arm. And understand that 
Vaccine shortages are actually a thing right now. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and say it. So what does that mean? Well, this vaccine shortage is affecting 60 countries worldwide. Now, regardless of the effects of COVID-19 or anything along those lines, understand that the vaccine shortage could be a big problem. If you start to restrict trade, travel, or anything else that could affect the economy of these countries based on vaccination status, this could become a big issue. Not to mention, it's something we need to watch out for because of possible future scenarios. This may not occur right now in the sense of vaccine shortages for COVID-19 leading to a conflict. However, if there ever was a more fatal strain of virus with a more coveted vaccine and a more sought after vaccine that was in high demand and short supply, those shortages could easily lead to conflict of some kind. Imagine if a country like India, per se, was unable to acquire the vaccines that they needed in order to take care of their people, but countries like Russia had enough vaccines for all of their people and more, but weren't willing to give them up. Understand that this is something we're watching happening right now as well. Now, is it likely that this situation right this second could lead to a conflict? Probably not. But does it give us a little bit of a glimpse into what could possibly occur in the future? Because this strain of virus doesn't have the fatality rate that other strains might have in the future that could create a more dire situation and create a higher demand for this vaccine to the point where people might be willing to do something drastic in order to acquire it, especially if they're in charge of the well-being of their people. So keep these things in mind because this is 2021. We used to be worried about food, water, energy, now we're worried about microchips and semiconductors. But understand that this is all just relevant to what's happening in the world. And this is not gonna just get better overnight. So you need to prepare as well and make sure that you're keeping an eye on what's going on on the world stage because a lot of this isn't being talked about very much and there's a lot of other possible outcomes here that would be very negative for both you and I. So if you have anything else to add about how these shortages could lead to conflict in the future, leave them in the comments below. You know I love discussing this stuff with all of you, and I love, of, at times, speculating on things that could occur based on the idea of what's happening right now. So let me know your thoughts on that and whether or not a vaccine shortage in the future could lead to something much worse. So without anything else to say about the dangerous side of these shortages, that's going to be it for Magic Prep.